Hi, this is Jay from Almost Homestead. I've had my Poland Pro PR5020 chainsaw for about a month now, so I figured it's a good time to do a review. I'll be showing from uh, the unboxing and everything in between, cutting small stuff and some logs up to 22 inches in diameter. So a couple things I'd like to address first off. There are a few videos on uh, YouTube about the Poland chainsaws and they're horrible. It's guys that don't know what they're doing. They've never used a chainsaw. They're in shorts and sandals. They haven't read the manual. So it's really important if you're just getting one of these saws and especially if you're new to chainsaws that you read the manual and look at videos online. You want to look at safety videos, just search on YouTube, Chainsaw Safety. There's also uh, some really good videos. One I would recommend, that would be How to Be a Chainsaw Hero by the Essential Craftsman. I encourage you to look at that one for just some common sense, basic knowledge. The Poland Pro PR5020 has a 20 inch bar and a 50cc motor. The Poland name is often mispronounced. I've got a link up above to an old commercial and uh, in the description also. In the case of the Poland Pro PR5020, you get 2.6 ounces of the 50 to 1 fuel mix. There's a little gate that fits in either slot of the uh, bar slot there. There is a stop, do not return to store once fueled pamphlet. And you get your Poland Pro. PR5020 instruction manual. I will be running some of the True Fuel 50 to 1 mix uh, through the first two tanks of gas uh, while I get it broken in and uh, this stuff's nice and clean. It's what's recommended. So at least the first few tanks I'm going to use this and uh, plan on sticking to some smaller stuff at first just to get the saw broken in like I said and then I have some uh, larger logs that I need to cut up. If you're new to chainsaws, you want to make sure you put bar oil in the chainsaw before you use it. Again, read the manual. Here's an example of some important information found in the manual. The chain must not move when the engine runs at idle speed. I did start the chainsaw once without the chain brake engaged and the chain was spinning and uh, it did mess up the idle so I did have to go in and adjust the idle using this T-screw here and it sounds like it's still running a little rich so I'll have to play with it some more. I started filming this review months ago and uh, I wanted to show a cold start of the chainsaw in the review, but I never got a chance to do that. Winter hit, snow, rain, uh, and I just never got back to doing the cold start. So I'm gonna do that today, and then we'll go back to the rest of the review. My feelings are still the same on the chainsaw, uh, so it doesn't change anything. I just wanna show this cold start. And it's probably better that I'm showing the cold start because I've used it for months now, and uh, It'll give you a good idea of how it performs after being used uh, for several months. Okay, so first thing you want to do is set that brake. Then we're going to turn it on. We're going to pull the choke all the way out. We're going to give 10 pumps on the fuel ball. Basically, you just follow the directions. It'll start up for you. So now I'm going to give it a pull or two and once it feels sounds like it's starting to turn over then I'll put the choke halfway in
Now let the saw warm up for about 30 seconds with the choke halfway out. After 30 seconds, you want to push the choke all the way in. That's going to increase the idle speed. At that point, you pull the trigger one time and that will put the idle back to normal speed. Make sure to disengage the brake before you rev the engine. If you rev the engine with the brake on, you risk damaging the clutch and the brake. Okay, so there's the cold start. Um, once in a while, when you do that first pull of the trigger to set the idle to normal, it'll die and then you just pull it a couple more times, it'll start right up and that's usually because your uh, idle set a little low. I, that happened to me so I just turned the idle up a little and now it works better when I do that one pull of the trigger and set the idle to normal. Alright, so we'll get back to the uh, original review here. Release the chain brake and rev the engine for 30 seconds to a minute. This will stretch the chain out. It comes tight from the factory, but first use, you'll stretch the chain a little and it'll become loose. Always check the chain tension before starting and using your saw. Turn off the chainsaw and check the chain tension. The replacement chain for this saw is an Oregon D70. I'll put a link in the description. More good information from the manual. When adjusting chain tension, make sure the bar nuts are finger tight only. Attempting to tension the chain when the bar nuts are tight can cause damage. See the manual for instructions on how to tighten the chain. A sharp chain will put out big shavings like this. A dull chain will spit out more of a sawdust. Avoid hitting any dirt or rocks or your chain won't be sharp for very long. To keep your chain sharp, I recommend this still two-in-one easy file. This is what I use and I was able to sharpen my chain the first time I tried. The learning curve is minimal. So I'll leave an Amazon link in the description below. The price is a little steep, but you're gonna save money on uh, chains and it's a good investment. The other thing I would recommend is this Oregon stump vise. This allows you to put the bar in the vise out in the field and sharpen the chain and freely turn the chain to sharpen it. I'll put an Amazon link in the description for this as well. If you've never bucked a log before, you cut down as far as you can without hitting the dirt, then roll the log over and cut the remaining part of the log. Before you attempt to cut down a tree, make sure you learn the proper procedures. There's more to cutting down a tree than just hacking into it with a chainsaw. There's plenty of ways to get hurt if you don't know what you're doing.
Make sure you clear any debris around the tree before you start cutting and always leave a safe exit path in case something goes wrong. Okay, so like I said, I've had this off for about a month. I've cut everything from uh, small stuff to 22 inch rounds. The chainsaw performed great. Um, I think as long as you have your chain adjusted to the right tension, you have bar oil, and you're not jamming that thing into a log forcing it, you're gonna do fine with this saw. If you're cutting stuff on a daily basis or really using a chainsaw a lot, you're probably gonna want a more expensive saw. This saw, I think it's geared for the person who's just doing jobs every once in a while, maybe just cutting wood for the winter. Um, that's what I'm doing and it works great for me. It's a cheap saw. If you follow the directions, I haven't had a problem with it starting. When I don't follow the directions, I have had problems with it starting. So it's just important to, like I said, read the manual and uh, start the thing like they say to start it or else you're going to have some issues probably and that's probably why a lot of people don't like it i've seen a lot of complaints on uh the motor not being enough to power a 20 inch bar and that may be true if you're doing like i said work all the time with the chainsaw but for me yeah it, it'd be nice if it had a little more power but i'm i'm going through stuff and you can see in the examples i'm putting on here that it does find through up to 22 inch uh, rounds like I said. Um, I've also heard complaints that uh, they're hard to start and yeah they are hard to start if you don't follow the directions on how to start them and if you don't keep the saw clean and don't store gas in the saw for a long time. So I've also heard it uses a lot of bar oil and yeah it does go through the bar oil but I'm okay with that because I'd rather have that thing pumping bar oil out than not having enough on the bar and the chain and having things heat up too much so I don't mind that myself. I'm gonna say this is a thumbs up for me. The saw is cheap, it does what I need it to do. If you're on a budget it's a great deal. I think I paid under 200 bucks at Lowe's so I, I don't think you can go wrong with this saw. I know a lot of people are probably gonna comment and say this thing's a piece of junk but like I said, I think if you take care of it, keep it clean, follow the directions, use good fuel in it, I think you're going to have a good experience with the saw. All right, I'm Jay at Almost Homestead. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.